Uh, hi, welcome back. So, in the previous module, I just started talking a bit about errors. I was moving the line a bit and saying, oh, here we are making a few errors and so on. Right? So, let us just dig a bit deeper in this concept of errors and I will also introduce error surfaces, which will again stay with us for a long time in the course. Right? Today, we will see something which is trivial, but this error surface or loss surface will keep resurfacing and we will uh, 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 see uh, it quite often in the course, at least in the initial part of the course. Right? Uh, so, again, this is the example we were dealing with. So, now I am looking at the uh, AND function now, okay. Uh, and for the AND function, the output should be uh, 1 only for 1 input, which is shown in green here, and it should be uh, 0 for the 3 red inputs, right. That is what the AND function is. And now my uh, uh, decision is, of course, W1, it is uh, sorry, yeah, so it is W0. Uh, plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 greater than or equal to 0, then the output would be 1, otherwise it would be 0, right. So, now let me just fix this as w0 as minus 1, right. So, that is what I have done here. So, my w0 is uh, fixed to minus 1, okay. Oh, again, I did the same thing, okay. Okay. So, w0 is minus 1. And I will try different values of w1, w2, right. So, it just so happens that the first value that I tried was w1 equal to minus 1, w2 equal to minus 1 and that is the line that I have drawn here. So, this since w0 is minus 1, of course, the y intercept is minus 1 and then I have minus x1, minus x2 and this is the line that I get. Now, what is wrong with this line? Yeah. So, obviously, if you look at the negative half space of the line, which is shown in the red region, right. And now, this is an example where it is clear that it is not always correct to say lies above the line, right, because these are all points which are lying above the line, but they are actually in the negative half space. So, above and below does not really define negative and positive half space. It simply boils down to equation, the inequality, right. So, minus 1, minus uh, x2, minus, sorry, let me just erase this and write it properly. Yeah, so this is the equation of the line. So, all the points which satisfy this greater than or equal to 0 lie in the positive half space and this happen to be those points or the points in this region and all the points which satisfy the inequality less than 0 are in the negative half space and it so happens that this entire red region is those points, right. So, it is not above or below, it is about uh, whether greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 0, which of these inequalities is satisfied, okay. So, these, these points lie in the negative half space as shown in the red uh, region and then of course, one of the points which should not have been in the negative half space, which is the point 1 comma 1 is lying in the negative half space. So, with these particular values of the perceptron or, or the weights of the perceptron uh, function, I am making error on one of the four inputs, right. So, if I just want to tabulate, so I took the w1, w2 values as minus 1, minus 1 and then I made an error of one of the inputs. Now, let me take the values 1.5 and 0, okay. Let me try those values. So, I will, uh, oops, yeah, I will make this as 1.5, okay. So, this is 1.5 and I want W2 to be 0, so I will just make it 0, okay. So, this is the line that I get and W0, of course, I have fixed at minus 1. And again, you can see the negative and the positive half spaces. So, I am again making an error of 1. It is a different error this time. One of the points which should have been in the negative half space, which is this point, uh, is actually in the positive half space now. Right? So, again, I have made an error of 1. Now, let us try a different value of w1, w2. So, I will take the values 10 and minus 10, right. So, I will just make this 10 and I will make this as minus 10, okay. Now, this is what is happening, right. So, again, uh, I am making an error of 2 because one of the red points is in the positive half space and the green point is actually in the negative half space, right. So, only these two red points uh, which are uh, uh, 0, 1 and 0, 0 have actually been, uh, uh, are in the right place, right. They are in the negative half space and they should be in the negative half space, but the other two points I am making error. So, what is happening here is that as I am changing the value of w1, w2, the error or the number of errors is changing, right. So, now I can think of error itself. Why is this not working at all? Yeah. 
I can think of error as a function of w1, w2 because I have fixed w0, right? And depending on the values of w1, w2 I, that I try, the error is changing. So now I think of error as a function of w1, w2. And now once we have digested that idea, we are ready for the next uh, slide where I have error which is on the z axis, okay? as a function of, uh, let me just try to see if I can zoom into this. Yeah, so error is a function of W1 and W2, right? So this is my W1, this is my W2 and along the Z axis I am plotting the error. And what are the values that the error function can take? Integer, Integer values, right? It can either be zero error, one error, two error or three errors, right? Those are the values that it can take. So that's why you see this uh, step function here. So for certain values of W, the error would be zero, which is the dark blue region. For certain values, it would be one, which is the purple region. For certain values, it would be two, which is the orange region. And for certain values, it would be three, which is the yellow region, right? So that's those. So now what I've done is I've taken all possible values of, oops, too much movement happening here. Yeah, I have taken all possible values of w1, w2. I have just restricted to minus 4 to plus 4 because that is all I can show on the plot and this. And I have substituted that those values uh, in the equation and then just counted the number of errors that I made. So we were doing that visually, but I could just write a program to calculate those errors. And that is how the code there was displaying it. Right? There was two errors, one errors and so on. And now these are the set of values for w1, w2. If I plug in these values and you can go back and check them, the error would be 0. These here, right, these are the values of W1 and uh, W2, right, for which the error is going to be 1 and so on, 2 and 3. So what I have done here is I have actually, uh, so this particular case cannot be error be both? Yeah. So the question here is for this particular case, can the error not be 4, right? So now you can see, so any line that you draw, okay. So the only possibilities are that all the four points lie in the, uh, uh, in the positive half space, in which case you would be making an error on three points or all the four points lie in the negative half space. That is the worst case scenario, right. In which case you will be making an error on three points, right. Because one, one of the two things would be right, right. I mean it would either be the positive point would be correct or the negative points will be correct. So that's why it can be only maximum three. You cannot make an error on all the four points. Um, okay, so now what I've done here actually is just uh, plotted the error for all possible values of W1, W2. And now from the plot, I can see which are the values which are useful, right? And I can just pick any of those W1, W2 values which correspond to that dark blue region of the plot, right? Uh, so this is uh, what we have done, but this is okay visually to do, but ideally we would want an algorithm such that I do not, now I can plot this visually for two inputs, right? But if I had n inputs, I cannot even plot and visualize it, right? So now I am looking for an algorithm just as visually by looking at this plot, I can find out what the right w1, w2 values are. Can I have an algorithm which allows me to find one such w1, w2 such that if my input is linearly separable, then for that value of W1, W2, my positive points would be on the right side and my negative side points would also be on the right side, right, on the correct side or in the right half space, right. So that's the algorithm that we're looking for and that's the perceptron learning algorithm that we'll see in the next module. Thank you.